All right, thank you for joining me in another episode of Parker's Reefs, and I'm here with Bodgy, the man himself. This dude lives and breathes everything fish keeping. He's got both fresh water and salt water, and I'm finally here to check out all of his tanks. Let's jump on into it. Let's go. All right, welcome to Parker's Reefs. On this episode, we're gonna check out all of Taran's from Bodgy from Australia, all of his tanks from his saltwater systems over here through to his freshwater systems. Let's jump into it and meet the man himself. Awesome, thanks for actually coming here and taking the time out of your day, Sam. So no trouble, man. we're gonna have a look at the saltwater tank to start off and then we can, I guess, loop around and look at the freshwater ones. Yeah, yeah. The channel so is mainly for the salt. It's so. all good. They've got yeah. some cool things in both the freshwater and the saltwater, but yeah, we may as well start with the saltwater side of things. And, yeah. Um, Tell us, tell us all about it, man. Tell us about your journey with the saltwater side. Yeah, so this tank is probably the one that's been taking most of my time now. I haven't really been focusing on the fresh ones too much, but it's a 40 centimeter cube. Um, and this is actually the third upgrade from my nano saltwater aquariums. So it actually started off in like a, a 10 gallon long tank like this. Yes. And then I upgraded it to a 30 centimeter cube and that was too small and then I was like, What's the biggest I can go to in this house, in this room? And that was the 40 cube. Beautiful. Um, and yeah, this, this tank, like it's, it's come through exactly how I envisioned it in terms of the tank, the equipment, the scape and all of that. So it's built by Petworks, the tank itself. Mm -hmm. And I went through a decision of if I was going to go for an all-in-one system or like a, you know, Frankenstein of <laughs> different equipment. And I just thought the Frankenstein of different equipment would probably be better for me, like learning wise. And then also it's good for videos because I guess I can switch out different equipment, reviews Definitely. and and whatnot. So yeah, so for people who don't know, you you run a very successful YouTube ch uh, channel, Bodgy from Australia. Yes. You cover, as you can tell by the a diverse range of tanks in here, you cover freshwater and saltwater things. And um, it's a really cool channel. So if the viewers haven't seen it yet, please jump on and check it out. Yeah, thank you. So... Um, aside from that, it's the whole idea of it was definitely to go for a mixed reef tank and I, I don't know, it was, for me, it's always been the, the fish, but starting to get into some of the corals, the sure. bug catches on and definitely. I'm like, ah, oh, the corals are really cool, but it, so the previous nano aquarium, I had all the corals were getting a bit too big for that system because obviously it was a small tank. <laughs> so this entire aquascape and, and the design around it was all themed from my elegance coral. Definitely. So, just keeps growing. It's a it's a pig. It keeps growing more <laughs> mounds. So the actual rockscape itself was uh, Marco rock, yep. and I spent about like two three months designing that, drawing it on paper. Then I actually drew it on like glass, so I can like build the rockscape wow. on it. Yep. And then, yeah. So the the entire design was based off that coral. It's changed a little bit with that little like boulder bomby thing in the the middle. So it was just a, a pillar and then a little flat area there. Um, but from there, it was just a you know putting all the rock together and then some of the corals I had in the previous system. So I just transitioned them over. And for filtration and all of that, it was actually a really quick cycle to set up the tank as well because sure. had the Seachem Title seventy five. That just has like a liter of marine pure balls. I've got another hang on back filter. I can't remember what the brand for this one is, but that's more uh, mechanical filtration. So okay. there's just some filter floss. And the previous tank, I didn't have a protein skimmer and I realized how much of a mistake that was because <laughs> just the amount of detritus and uh, you know fluctuating nitrates and phosphates and all of that, I just, I couldn't deal with it. So went for a protein skimmer. The option that I could think of was an Aqua One. Some of the reefers might Look at me a bit funny for that. But no, nothing wrong with that at all, It, it man. does the job. I'm happy with it. And it's kind of overkill for this aquarium, for but sure. it's That's fine. fine. It, it's probably, well. yeah, it's like a quarter of the tank in terms <laughs> of size. So it works pretty well. So I'm happy with that. This tank you've had running now, I know you've transitioned through a few oh, upgrades, yeah, but this, this tank's been running for how long now? Uh, since January, I'm okay, pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah so since January. So it's been wet for about six months. And I know, yeah, as you said, some things have transitioned across, but I mean, it, I know it's not a massive system, but man, it's so nicely grown in. I'm it's, happy um, about how fast it's matured. Like it, yeah. it just seems to be growing like that. And especially with the coralline algae, um, because I've been dosing all of my trace elements a lot more on a very consistent basis with this aquarium, the previous sure. ones, it was just whenever I remembered, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the coralline has just really taken over. So it's been, it's been great just to see 
the whole change happened so fast and like everything mature really well in this aquarium. So yeah, I'm happy with that. Looks incredible. Now, tell us about some of the livestock in there. Obviously, uh, being a fairly small tank, you're pretty limited on the fish you can have in there. I can see four on the screen right now. What what have you got in there? Yeah, so there is it four? Yeah, there should be five. So <laughs> um, it obviously any saltwater tank has to have clowns. If you don't have clowns, you're a weirdo in my opinion. <laughs> so um, I I was actually thinking to go for designer clownfish, and yes. uh, um, I had my eye on some platinum clowns for for the longest time. But then I was like, the classic of the Ockies, and it's like, you can't go wrong with them. So, got myself some Ockies. I'm kind of regretting that I didn't go for Peculars because they have a little bit more of like a cooler black banding <laughs> through the middle. But I love my Ockies, and they kind of love each other. I know there are some horror stories with Ockies being a bit aggro to one another. Yeah, right. So no, those two look like they've paired up quite nicely. They just no aggression. They they very much love each other. But being how Ockies are, their you know weird behaviour, they started to slightly host the utter chaos of it. Yep, yep. It's, it's nothing bad. They just sort of hover up like on top of it and sure. it's a, a weird sort of thing. Um, <laughs> haven't named the Ocellaris yet. So if anyone has oh, names, geez, please Oh, jeez, we've got to think free. of some names. <laughs> yeah. The only fish I have named in this tank is Bunnings, my lawnmower Blenny. Lovely. <laughs> His name is Bunnings for a few. I don't actually know if he's a, he's a lawnmower Blenny. He's, I bought him as one, but he doesn't look like a true lawnmower. And he doesn't look like a blue spot. He's sort of like a hybrid between the two. But um, he's a cool fish. He's really homicidal. If I stick my fingers in the tank, he's, he's always oh, biting quite me. aggressive. Yeah, yeah, really aggressive to my hand. To the other fish, he's fine. <laughs> but his name is Bunnings because, well, he's long like a sausage and you get the best sausages from the Bunnings. That's true. <laughs> yeah, snags. And also lawn mowers, and you can buy them from Bunnings as well. So. Makes sense. I like it. Nice yeah. few degrees of separation, but it works <laughs> yeah. well. Yep. And then um, the other fish was, so in this tank, I had a dream fish that I wanted to add and that was my Royal Grammar. For Got sure. him last week, captive bred from Deer Park Aquarium. Awesome. But for the longest time they weren't in stock. Yes. So when I went to Deer Park Aquarium a few weeks back, they had a yellow assessor and they're both basslets, Royal Grammar <laughs> and assessor. So I was like, you know what? I'll never be able to get a Royal Grammar. So I'll get an assessor <laughs> instead. And then ta-da, the Royal Grammar became in stock. So it was like a great situation. I don't mind the yellow assessor. It's a really cool fish. It spends a lot of its time in the open and it's a different body shape to the Royal Grammar. So they, they both look like, you know, different fish. Rather Definitely. than just a, a recolored. I think they fit yeah. in together really well because, as yeah. I say, the Yasses is pretty much the complete opposite of the grammar in that he is going to be out and about in the open space of the water all the time, when the grammar is going to be more of a, a bit more of a quay, cave yeah. dweller, um, and he's going to chill under the rocks. Yeah, so, so that's where the, the grammar spends most of its time. It does come out a little bit, but like you know, we're in front of the tank and of all course, that, so yeah, yeah, it's still getting used it. to. Yeah, getting used to me, but getting that royal grammar was like the biggest panic because it's like <laughs> it's a fish that you've wanted for so long yep. when it's finally in stock and you buy it there's always that fear that it's like not going to do well and it yep, yep. you know passes away the emotional trauma Absolutely. that you probably go through because i get really attached to my fish so as we all do. yeah doing really really good so far feeding basically everything that i offer it so there's about six different types of frozen foods that i'm feeding on Lovely. a switched up basis and pellets so being that it's captive bred, it's it's just a, a breeze to take care of. Brilliant, but brilliant. Aside from fish, I'm pretty sure that's it. Yeah. Oh, good. Now tell us about some of the corals. You've got an astonishing amount of coral in a uh, 40 centimeter cube. Yeah, so. the, the coral addiction really did start to take <laughs> over. So um, the plan was obviously to accommodate some of the corals that I had in the previous nano setup. So that was my Euphilia garden, the Elegance coral, um, and then also some of the other bits and bobs like the zoanthins. But the main plan was just whatever was on the left side of the tank. So that was the, the primary goal. So yep. I had a little raised platform so we don't have any coral warfare between the yeah. elegance and the hammers. But there's about three different types of hammers and a frog spawn in the back. Gorgeous. And then obviously there's just a, 
a basic elegance coral, just green, purple Nothing tips. Nothing basic about that. Elegance. Yeah, it's absolutely it's, gorgeous. It's coral. a chunk of an elegance. So I know my friends in the UK that watch this channel absolutely adore Aussie elegance, and I yeah, think we do take them a little for granted here in yeah, Australia. They're so super underrated. They're a gorgeous coral. Eventually, like when I upgrade to a much bigger aquarium, which will happen in the future, but <laughs> I do want to have like a, a, an elegance garden because I just don't really see it or happen all that often. Agreed. Um, and then if we move a little bit to the to middle rock. That was probably only added about a month or two ago. Yes. And that was to accommodate some of the SPS corals that I'm trying out. So yeah, these yeah. were all recovery style corals from Deer Park Aquarium. So they yes. were just in that like sort of clearance tank for $10 or so. Lovely. So added in a few just to test it out, see how it's doing. Some of them have taken a really quick recovery. The, yep. the primary one, there's a really bright, like sort of toxic green one with really cool fluffy polyp extensions. Yeah, definitely. Right there. So. He's looking great. Yeah, it's just been doing really well. And I'm happy if it just continues growing more and more. Um, oh, we missed out. There's a little red cap Monty up the top there, oh, there as well. Oh, there is too. And you've got some gorgeous shape happening. Beautiful. Yeah, I just put it there. Actually, the inspiration was from... That was actually a video of a tank tour that you did at Mez Fletcher's yes. um, room. And she had a, a scrolling Monty that was like on the corner of the aquarium. Beautiful. So I was like, okay, that looks really cool. I want one as well. <laughs> yeah. And then... There's a few more SPS coral frags there, plus a few bits and bobs of corals that I picked up, sure. like a, um, a Kenya tree. There's a little zoanthid, I don't even know what it is, plus a toxic green pally that I got from Williamstown. Lovely. But majority, like 90% of the corals in here are from uh, Deer Park Aquarium. So the Art of Chaos zoanthids, that was also a dream coral that I wanted to have in this tank. I don't know yeah. what the, the fix with Art of Chaos was, but no, the name solar. and yeah, the, the, the colors are just great. A little red shroom, and then there's also two button scollies. Um, scollies are probably one of my favorite corals because they just look so oddly edible. <laughs> They're very, <laughs> very puffy, pillowy looking coral. Definitely recommend not eating you them. Don't eat it. Yeah. You should try eating zoanthids though. No, <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> um, then we move on to the true island of assorted corals. <laughs> so there's some uh, some Gorgonians up there in the back. They were actually sent to me from Simple Aquariums, is another yeah, Australian yeah, YouTuber. Nice. Um, the plan is to hopefully put them in here when this tank settles down. Sure. I've also got a really just basic common leather. I really like leather corals, they yeah, look cool. Yeah, beautiful corals. Um, then we've got a really cool recovery coral, which was that Favides, the weird war paint looking yeah, Australian yeah. war coral. That one was totally brown when oh, I got wow. it from Deer Park and it has just recovered so well. So it, it was like the biggest boost of confidence that I had in terms of awesome. recovering corals. Awesome. So it's been a little knack of the, the, the thing that I've been going on. Um, then I've got a little A-can. That was a, a recent addition. Um, I have a, another recovery coral. We've got some zoanthids. I don't even know where they came from. They, just, <laughs> they were like, hey, I'm going to start growing. <laughs> They're growing here now. So they've been doing really well. Don't really mind them. Um, oh, the, another cool story is the, the two Galaxia corals that I yes. have here. They don't seem to be all that common. And yes, they have a reputation of being totally, you know, bastards stinging. in the yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> stinging everything. Those have actually been all right considering the coral that I have around them. Yes. But they were actually gifted to me from the uh, University of Melbourne. Oh, wow. And there's a uh, professor, professor, there's a professor there uh, under the name of Dr. Wing Chan, and she's doing some really cool research on getting corals adaptable to global warming out in the oceans. Amazing. So those two galaxies have been genetically modified for their zooxanthellae to withstand temperatures of up to like 30 degrees, which is like nuts in a, yeah, <laughs> in a salt water system. Amazing. So it's really cool. Like they can, you know, be really easy for, you know, fluctuating temperatures or yep, for beginners yep. potentially and whatnot. Super resilient coral. Yeah, so it's great. Um, got a little recordia there. I, it's meant to be blue. I kind of don't know what color that is. It's like a weird <laughs> gray kind of thing. Um, yeah, so it's a, and that one I've had for a really long time. It recently shot off a little pup. So awesome. that was like, oh my God, that's so cool. <laughs> um, then the bottom here is just for more recovery corals. Yeah, yeah. I've got some trackies. So that one is a, a rainbow tracky, I guess. And then yep. I've got a barcode. Beautiful. The barcode tracky has been growing a bit too fast for my liking, <laughs> which isn't a bad thing, but it started off probably the size of like a, a $1 coin. Okay. And 
I don't know what I've been doing correctly, but it just keeps inflating more and more. <laughs> Definitely enjoying life there. That's yeah. awesome. Um, a fluffy mushroom and then there's uh, more scullies. They were a recovery and then I don't know what that one is. I think it's a tracky, but it's a recovery coral as well. So it's just been ticking along. It was a little like bit of tissue on a skeleton. Wow. And now it's just started it's to form really, a mouth. It's really starting to fill out now. That's yeah. really cool. That's it, I guess, coral wise. But That's a every heck of a coral, lot of coral in, the in a 40 centimeter cube. It's <laughs> yeah. amazing. And it's really cool to see um, the recovery aspect of the corals as well, where you're picking up some yeah. pieces that have either been stung or shipped poorly or something, and they're doomed for the uh, live rock bin. But yeah. um, <laughs> you've managed I guess to it's, save them. It's good in a way because, I mean, if you're a beginner and you want to try out some more you know, higher end corals or, or stuff that it may not necessarily be in your budget. And you've got stable water parameters it might be a good thing to have a look at you know just try that out see how it yeah, goes yeah. and if it recovers then you know you're doing a good job absolutely and then yeah. you i mean it's you end up with a beautiful coral that costs yeah. very little money so <laughs> exactly <laughs> happy days and and also you, you if you do lose it it's you know it was probably on its way yeah. out in the store anyway so there's not a lot lost as opposed exactly. to taking a healthy coral and finding out that you know a fish in your system likes to eat them or something like that yeah 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 <laughs> Now that's really cool, amazing amount of coral in there and I really love the stories behind them. Tell us a bit about, um, you, you mentioned it's a Frankenstein assortment of equipment. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about some of the equipment running on the system now. Yeah, sure. So the main thing that I wanted to go for was over filtration in the aquarium because it's a small tank. I wanted to make sure I've got the sufficient filtration in case I miss a water change a sure. week or something. So as I mentioned before, I've got the Seachem Tidal, which is a primary biological filtration in the tank. Yes. I, I don't know why there are scissors on here, but if I open <laughs> that up, there is um, chock-a-block full of uh, marine pure ball in that tank amazing so tank in that day in that <laughs> hang on back yep. and the seekem title i made a review on that but for anyone looking to get a hang on back filter i'd probably say they did amazing work designing yeah, that yeah. that filter it's it's just probably one of the best pieces of equipment that i've ever bought um i think that is a sun sun hang on back filter people are probably going to shoot me for saying that brand <laughs> in the freshwater world but um yeah that's mainly just got filter floss that does sure. a bit of mechanical filtration the Aqua One Protein Skimmer, and finally I've got the Dymax SpaceX Marine Light. <laughs> the most Frankenstein of them all, however, would probably have to be my lid. Sure, which sure. Is the the drawback of going with a Frankenstein system is you can't really get like a you know an NVS Aqua printed lid or something like that because there's always something changing. Yes. So the lid situation I have going on is some egg crate. Yep. And I was a bit paranoid with, you know, one of the fish, like the lawnmower Blenny, making a, a clearance out of the hole. So yep. got some glad wrap and some tape, <laughs> which is probably never done before, but hey, it works. It's and working. That's the main thing. Yeah. It keeps the evaporation in a little bit. And um, yeah, it, it's easy. I've got a little feeding port. Oh, <laughs> so perfect. Yeah, it works. DIY delight. Yeah, it works pretty well. It's... Also not that, you know, visible, I guess, when you're looking at the tank from a front on. No, no, you don't Only, actually notice it so yeah, much. Yeah, from the top is where it's like, oh, God. The inhabitants God. do all the talking, yeah, so... It works, what is that? <laughs> yeah. It works a treat. Yeah. Um, and then I've got a Ripple ATO. Yep. The auto top-off was a lifesaver. The previous tank didn't have one, so... Sure. It was just fluctuating salinity and it was just like, no, nah, I can't deal with that. So, <laughs> and in a small tank, I didn't realize how fast evaporation happens. Yeah, yeah. So that's, I guess, it in terms of the equipment in the tank. Beautiful. Well, it's an incredible system for six months old. I know some things carried across, but it yeah. looks an absolute treat and such a um, beautiful I really beautiful like nano. Yeah, feeding the corals as well. Like I... Yeah. I I do a lot of trace <laughs> elements. Sure. Um, at the moment, it's it's pretty simple. I've got the continuum component A and B, so that's for calcium and alkalinity. Yes. Then I've got the aquaforous component A, B, and C for the mi macro micronutrients. Yes. <laughs> so that's all just the trace that goes in. I also started to give them the Seachem amino acids. Yes. I don't know why. I was just like, all right, more food, sure. I guess. <laughs> and parameter-wise, I don't really have any issues with the amount of food that I'm giving. Okay. I did a test yesterday, actually, after months <laughs> of just <laughs> letting the tank run stable so I could let you know. But calcium and alkalinity, I can't remember anything off the top of my head now. All but good. They're all like in between where they need to be. Yes. Nitrate is like 0.5. Two five. Oh, wow. It's basically like unregistered. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. that's a bit of a worry. Um, no, that's but perfect. it's Just fine. Yeah. Sweet. I had the slightest 
I think it was either Dino or Cyano. It mm -hmm. was a little like area on a rock somewhere and I only had one fish in the tank at that time. So I was like, oh my God, this is it. <laughs> is this the end of my tank? And then I uh, got some more fish over you know a few weeks and that's why everything has just been running stable now. So happy with how that's all going. Incredible. Now, I can't help but notice there is another saltwater aquarium just to the next to this one that's obviously in its um, early phases. Can you tell us a bit about the plans for that system? The bug has caught on. <laughs> so, <laughs> actually, in this tank, uh, like where this tank was, I had a 30 centimeter cube. Yes. And the original plan for that one was seahorses. Okay. But the whole plan for that tank didn't really work out. It wasn't enough flow and all of those kinds of things. So, sure. I scrapped that put all of what I can salvage into the tank down below, which okay. is just a, a holding system. Sure. Um, and also I've got some phytoplankton. Yeah. I turned it off because audio, but <laughs> I'm producing way more phyto than I need. Awesome. <laughs> so yeah, but this tank, I don't really know what I'm gonna do with it. Sure. Um, I'm thinking to go macroalgae and yeah. maybe some soft corals, but just do macro only. I've been seeing a lot of cool macro setups online. Definitely. So I was like, yeah. Let's give it a shot. Sounds um, incredible. And then maybe go ahead and try a bit more of a sensitive fish, like a, you know, a pair of mandarins or something, and just sure. give this tank to them, get it like full refugium style with copepods and amphipods and everything like that. Or maybe I just give my uh, blue and yellow tailed damsel fish a permanent home in here and, <laughs> and just let him live out his life however long that may be. He can be aggressive at his own reflection. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, yeah, just haven't given myself up to give him away yet. So yeah, it was either he lives in here and be the only fish in a bloodbath or I'd give him his own <laughs> prime penthouse. Just plan B setup. sounds much better there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so perfect. that's the plan for this tank. Yeah. Super cool. Now th these aren't the only tanks in the room. If I uh, pan around, you want to take us through some of the other systems you have in here? Yeah, so freshwater is where my hobby started. I've been doing about 12 years of freshwater aquarium. Wow. So kept, Mate, yeah. you're a young man though, yeah? Like yeah. you're like 19 or 20 years old, am I right? I, yeah, 19. I've been wow. keeping fish since I was like this big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, probably since birth, I say the past 12 years because it's been 12 years since like my own responsibility without any help carrying buckets sure. or anything. Yep. So, this is the five foot tank. This is where the fish room technically started. Yes. Um, yeah, this is a five foot by two foot by two foot. Um, just a, a planted aquascape, got some basic community fish. It's just a good tank because I work from home in here. So, yep, yep. so just watching this as I'm working is pretty good. It's a beautiful system. I love the height of it too. Yeah, it's it's a bit of a pain sometimes for maintenance I if I imagine. need to replant or something. But um, the, the coolest story about this tank is the fish, the primary fish that I have in this tank. And that's my uh, female Jack Dempsey Jill. Um, Jack Dempsey's, <laughs> uh, yes, <laughs> Jill. <laughs> Jill the Jack. Um, <laughs> Jack Dempsey's are known to be an incredibly, incredibly aggressive fish. Um, so I wouldn't even recommend trying them out with community fish like I have now, because I have seen some terror Jack Dempsey's. So this fish, however, she's just mentally broken. She doesn't know what she is. <laughs> so I've had her in with like neon tetras, which are like a fish that's like this big yes. and like baby fish that I've been breeding and they just swim past their face and she's like, all right, cool, whatever. I'm not <laughs> so, going to eat them. Amazing. Yeah. Not going to eat them. And um, yeah, they're just a really good mix of fish. I do need to top up the fish in here. I always, you know, circulate fish, move yep. them to different systems, give them away to <laughs> friends and family. Sure, so sure. Going to get some more fish. And then we move into this tank here, yeah. which, yeah, so this aquarium is got my uh, my pride and joy in terms of my, my fish. Yep. That's my Australian lungfish. That's been my, oh, let, let me move the flipper out of the way. Say, yeah, you come to get magnified there. Yeah, um, that has been my long time dream fish, probably since I was like 13 or something. I saw one of them, actually two of them at the Sea Life Melbourne Aquarium and uh, one of the curators there was doing a, a talk on them and how they're like this evolutionary bridge for like fish and dinosaurs and like land creatures. I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. <laughs> so yeah, it was basically impossible to keep one in captivity if you're not like a public aquarium or a zoo or anything like that. Sure. However, a few years back, there was a company under the name of Jardini Co that got some clearance from the Australian government to collect a few uh, adult Australian lungfish out from the wild yes. to do a captive breeding program. 
They then started breeding. I'm not sure if that was to re-release them back into the wild or anything like that, but they then started breeding and that was like the first time ever in the entire world that lungfish were able to be sold for the pet trade. Wow. So they have a pretty high price tag at around $1,000 each. Yes. And that's come down from about two grand when they were first introduced. Yeah, yeah. So it was my 18th birthday present to myself. Uh, <laughs> Most people would buy a car or I know go out for a party and I got a fish. <laughs> and yeah, it just goes to show how much of an, an, an addict I am to this. <laughs> um, but yeah, this tank is a uh, four foot shallow aquarium. You'll notice that with the two freshwater tanks, they have an inbuilt sump. Yep. Keeping that sort of system for a year, I don't know how I feel about it. It's a bit of a, uh, a bit of an interesting <laughs> method of filtering and I kind of prefer the external filters now, sure. but this tank is just sort of dedicated to him. And I have a few oddball catfish and uh, an Australian bass that's growing up in here. I don't know why I got it. It's a cool fish. So <laughs> it's just like, you know what, whatever. <laughs> it seems somewhat unusual, I mean, to me, but it may not be that unusual to have a shallow freshwater system. Yeah, it's <laughs> actually like this tank itself, I'm pretty sure was designed for corals. So okay. like, uh, a frag system. Yep, yep. And um, I got it from my local freshwater aquarium store, Aquatico Aquarium. Actually. So this actually was a planted tank for the longest time before yes. I got the lungfish. So it was like a aqua soil, bunch of different plants that I was growing to then sell. Um, the plant market though, however, has just dropped. Oh, okay, yeah, right, because yeah. with corals, there's a stable price basically yep. whenever you have a look. And like some, they come in fashion and yeah, the price goes up and down. With plants, because they grow so easily, everyone has freshwater aquatic <laughs> plants now. Everyone's growing them and everyone's selling them. So the market just, you know, it plummeted, you know, sure. dirt cheap. So there wasn't any real value to grow those plants. Yep. So then got the lungfish, put it in here, and it's just been happy days ever since. That's really cool. I actually really love the shallow look of it, with yeah, this, it's particularly a, with this long, it's a really short cool, fish in there as well. Yeah, like, yeah, really cool system. And I was thinking like, so with Australian lungfish, they get about three, four feet long when right. they're about three fully feet. Grown. Yeah, when they're fully grown. So, and they're, they're designed, or like when you see them in, out in the wild, they're, they're mainly from shallower parts of the water. You never see them in like deep lakes or anything like that. Right, right. So like a, maybe a little bit taller than this, like a 45 centimeter tall tank. Yep. But like six, seven, eight feet long would be yep. really cool. So Awesome. Oh, well, maybe down the track when he goes up. But the other thing I love about this fish is that he actually comes with his own like birth certificate. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> he's got his uh, microchip number, authenticity to say where he's from because it's illegal to go ahead and take them out from the wild to keep them. Yep. It's about yep. a four year jail time. Apparently it was like a $25,000 fine. Holy moly. So <laughs> that's something I don't want to go through. No, so, uh, particularly when you're doing YouTube videos on it. You yeah. Need, you need to have that uh, certificate up there. To I think say, when hey, I like made the legal. video of me getting this fish, there yep. was less of me showing off the fish and more of me saying, I bought this fish illegally, <laughs> <laughs> just covering myself. Definitely and then important. the final saltwater, saltwater tank, geez, <laughs> this just goes to show how much my brain is getting wired to <laughs> saltwater. This is a little cube tank that I set up because I work here as well. So sure. um, that's just a, another planted aquarium with just a bunch of epiphyte plants, they call it, that grow on like surfaces, like wood. Yeah, right. Um, and I don't know what I'm going to put in this tank fish wise, yes. but it's just a lot of wood and it's got a little like waterfall thing that I plumbed in there as well so awesome. it's just some cool plants coming in and out of the water but that's basically it in terms of all of the um, fish tanks i mean this is a small tank this is like a 30 yeah, centimeter cube 30, 30 cube yeah but it doesn't look like it with yeah. with the things coming out of the top of it yeah you're really i was really happy with like the scale that i got because the wood takes up probably about half of the aquarium i so can imagine like a, it's a giant bit of wood that just went into that tank. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm maybe thinking to get some fish that I could breed in there or yeah, cool. you know, just keep a little species spotlight style of aquarium, which I the, really like doing. The scape in there gives it this real sense of depth though. It looks like it goes back much yeah, further it, than 30 centimeters. I've never really been one for making aquascaped tanks. It's always <laughs> just been plants, let the plants grow out, add some fish, the yep. fish and the plants, they look good, that's yep. it. And Happy then for days. this tank, I was like, I'm actually going to try wow. put something together <laughs> and it worked out pretty well. So yeah, I'm happy with it. Incredible. Well, that's, that's awesome. What an awesome uh, fish room you've got here. And I know um, people are going to absolutely love your enthusiasm for both the freshwater and saltwater side <laughs> yeah. of the hobby. So 
For everyone that hasn't yet, please do jump on over to Bodgy from Australia's YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description below so you can find him there and you can stay up to date with all of these tanks here because yep. as, you can, as you can tell, the man is full of enthusiasm. <laughs> he lives and breathes it. Um, it's very rare that I meet someone that I think is more enthusiastic about, uh, about uh, fish tanks and reef keeping than I am. But um, I think not only have I met my match, I've uh, met someone that's possibly taken the crown off me. So by all means, get over there, subscribe to that channel so you can follow all of the happenings. But um, I'll probably wrap things up here, man. Thank you Thank so you. much for having us and taking us through all of these beautiful tanks. It's um, no worries at all. Pleasure. something I've been looking forward to do for quite some time. So it's awesome to finally be here. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. All right, guys, there you have it. That is the tour of Bodgy from Australia and his fish room with both his freshwater and his incredible saltwater tanks. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I did filming it. If you've got any questions, comments, or feedback for myself or Bodgy, be sure to pop it in the comment section down below because I do personally reply to each and every comment there. And of course, if you're yet to subscribe, please consider doing so. I've got another tank tour coming up next weekend. And I have also just received this Hydros Control 4 in the mail, which I will be doing an in-depth review on. So there's heaps to come up on the channel, including some more product spotlights. And of course, some more coverage of my very own Dream Reef Tank. Other than that, guys, I will leave you to it. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time, stay safe, keep reefing. Bye.